Hey, what is up? We are live. Thank you for uh, everyone who joins. Let me tell you a bit of, about what happened in the last five minutes or so. I finished the workout, wrapped it up, went to the shower real fast, took a one and a half minute shower, uh, made some coffee, <laughs> did some of the setup, and here we are. Uh, so thank you so much for being here. Uh, probably one minute late, but that's fine. Better late than never. Uh, and today we're actually going to paint a portrait together. It's going to be fun. It's going to be very educational. Hopefully we will enjoy this. Uh, hopefully the stream doesn't do too many issues. Uh, it's still something I have yet to take care of. So my apologies. I'll do my best to keep you entertained. We're going to get started with who's in the house. Uh, and I'm also going to, while we talk, cut this thing uh, in the middle because I only need one. Uh, I just didn't, couldn't figure out how to do it so it just one shows. Um, Aparna says wait is on. Thank you for being here uh, and you're excited about the portrait so that's a good thing. Should I just show you my face? Let me just show you my face. Why am I... No, you know what, let me come on, see what I'm doing. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, Dave is here, uh, my favorite time of the week. Thank you so much for saying that Dave, I really appreciate it. Um, and you should all check out Dave's channel. Um, Parna says, yay. Christine Bourgeois says, good morning, Dave. I like your channel too. Oh, nice, nice. So uh, It's a nice community we got here. The Cubs win, yeah, from Texas. Dave says, I did enjoy last week's live, but much prefer the actual painting lives. Yeah, I'll try and have a healthy mix, uh, always. Um, admittedly, I'm at a point where I'm doing quite a lot of just talking videos. Um, uh, more than painting, more than I used to do, let's stretch me out, here, here I am, <laughs> um, and I used to do more painting in the past, that's just because I'm going through times where I'm just super busy, or I want to focus on painting more time alone off camera, but I will go back to doing more videos of painting too. Um, Aparna says, I'm so excited to see your live painting, don't you get uh, scared, nervous about how it'll turn out? Well, I definitely am nervous about how it'll turn out, um, but you have to kind of um, recognize the fact that with watercolor, that's always going to be the case, so I don't know what we'll produce here. But the thing is, and this is something I just thought of, don't think of the painting process as a binary win or lose. Um, so even if it didn't turn out the way you want to, you can still find a lot of wins in that. So to me, if I got a section right, a section that looks really good to me, that's a win. Um, if I got one aspect of it right, if I like the way, for example, the colors work together or something like that, to me, that's a win. Um, so my standards are, I don't want to say low, that's funny, but they are adjusted to what painting is all about. And painting is about the experience and about doing it. It's not about talking about it, it's not about hypothesizing, it's about practicing. Uh, and this is what it's all about here. Uh, so this is what we're gonna do. Just make sure I got everything arranged here neatly. Um, and let's see who else is in the chat. I'm gonna try and talk a little slowly today, uh, just to make sure I don't burn out my voice. Crispy, good afternoon from Hamburg. As always, Lori Hoover says, morning everyone, Cubs win. Could you show your drawing subject uh, could you show your drawing subject sometime before painting? Uh, do you mean uh, to the actual subject for this? Then you can see it now on screen. Um, if you want to see the drawing stage, I did put a link, so refresh the page if you don't see it. You should see it. I hate that warning about the bitrate being too slow. Oh man, it's gonna kill me. Uh, but yeah, um, hopefully you can see it now. Uh, I did share it. Uh, I do share it in the description for the live stream way in, like way in advance, the, the day before when I schedule the live stream. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna talk about also the drawing stage in just a second, okay? Uh, Christine says, uh, oh, I set, up, I set my alarm, this is so fun, cool. So very grateful that you set the alarm. Hans Palacio, hi Leron, how are you? Uh, Vanessa, hi from Belgium. How is the weather in Israel? It's hot, it's really hot and warm, I'm gonna. Uh, turn down the air condition a bit to have it cooler. Uh, Susan Lynn, hi Ron, Glowing Skull, YouTube, <laughs> YT, hi, I assume it's YouTube. Uh, Vespa for Jen, hi from Truckee, California. James L. Baker, my friend, how are you? Hi Ron, greetings from London. Always great to see you. I always learn lots watching your work. Thank you so much. Watching you work. Thanks so much. 
thank you for being here. Cubs win actual drawing stage. Yes, definitely. I will. I will. Um, usually for live streams, I like to save some time and have the drawing in advance. And I show. I tend to show it more for the videos. Uh, but I will try for the next live stream to actually um, share fully the drawing stage as well. What I did include in the description box is a scan of this. Uh, not a scan, but a good photo of this drawing stage. And as we talk and as we get started um, in getting ready to paint this, you can actually take it now from the description, trace over it, get it ready and have it ready to paint along with it. So if that's something you're interested in, feel free to do that. Um, I think a lot of value is from first watching and then later maybe painting. Uh, but yeah, one more thing I will say about today's process before we'll uh, jump into some more of your messages and chats. Um, is that I was asked about how to turn a black and white picture into color. Now, usually my approach is just use whatever color you want. As long as you get the value right, it's good. But what I think I'll do today is try to go for somewhat realistic colors. Not, not, it's not going to be photorealistic or anything like that. But I will try to tackle this with colors that could be skin tones. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'll try preserving the values that we see in the reference photo. Uh, while still applying color. So I'm not going to use purple and blue and green and all that. No, I'm going to keep it fairly minimal to a bit of red, a bit of yellow, a bit of blue, just to mute things a little. Uh, and I'll show you how to create this in skin tones. Okay. Now I do have to admit one more thing. This isn't going to be an easy portrait for me too. Uh, especially because there are quite a lot of smooth transitions here. So what you will see me do in just a moment uh, is drop a lot of... Um, I'm going to pre-wet this. Unlike the previous demo I did, I'm going to pre-wet this and work wet and wet in the beginning just to get some of the shapes in, uh, the smooth transitions of the face. There's a very gentle shadow right here uh, under the cheek, between the under the nose, right around here, around the lips. These are very nuanced, very hard to achieve. Um, so we will use a very wet initial wash and see how we can pull it off. Okay, uh, It's going to be a challenge for me to all, I, I'll admit. Uh, we'll see about that. I considered flattening them and disregarding them and just going for black and white, but I feel like I do want to take this one step further. Uh, let me make sure my air condition moves the um, blind thing, whatever. Yeah, here we go, so that I can actually feel it. John Floyd, Leonard, Texas. Michael H. Haley Ron from Holland, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you, Michael. Hain, uh, greetings from Yangon, Myanmar, Burma, cool. Uh, Shelly Pryor, Fine Art, G, thank you for the G, hope you're doing well. Uh, for Neko One, hi from California, hey cat. Shelly says good morning, uh, okay, yeah, that's no message. Good morning from Southern Ontario, Canada. Six Wielini, how are you, uh, are you going to follow the colors on the picture? <laughs> Will you try something crazy? Yeah, I'll, I'll go with colors. I'll go with colors, but not crazy as I just explained. By the way, uh, if you can drop a like uh, on this video, I see 48 viewers and 30 likes. So thank you so much. That's a great stat. If you can keep it up, uh, that'll be great. Tazin Halim, how are you? Marjorie Johnson, good morning from upstate New York. Happy to be here after a bad week. A bit of joy coming my way. Thanks. Now, uh, how about my issue with wet uh, on wet backwash? So we're going to do some wet, wet in wet. It's going to be a challenge. Oliferous, I made it finally. Hey, brother. Hey, how are you, Oliferous? Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, morning from Seattle. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for being here. Um, let's see here. Jade Moonchild, how are you? Uh, so, Jade, uh, you're going to like this um, because Saturday's video I will review uh, and critique your work. So, thank you so much for sending it over. I really appreciate it. You've done a great job and I really love it. I love everything about it, the, the imagination behind it. It's really good. Uh, so you'll hopefully enjoy that. Uh, by the way, this is a good time to for two announcements, kind of house cleaning announcements. One, Saturday's video, I'll finally critique the paintings you sent me via email. Okay, so Jade, yours is going to be there. Quite a lot of people are going to be there. Um, second is if you tried purchasing my courses lately, there is a technical issue. Some of you I know have not received emails. I'm working on fixing it. It was actually a major, major technical issue. Nothing to worry about on your end. Simply, you didn't get an email uh, and I need to figure that out. I already figured it out. It's just gonna take some time to implement the solution. 
Uh, so my apologies. It's, it's just one of those things that I do behind the scenes that no one knows about. All you see is the paintings, but there is so much that goes on beyond, behind the scenes. Um, it's this. Uh, it is, uh, it's a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of work to solve this, by the way. I want to check something. Hang on a second. I want to see where... Okay, yeah, the audio comes from my headphones. That's good. Um, so in any case, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of work. I fix it for a credit card. So if you're paying with credit card, it will work well and you should receive an email and you should be added to the mailing list. But if you're using PayPal, it's a mistake on my end. And in any case, if you need help with anything, you know what to do, just email me. There's usually the email address on every web page. Uh, so you can simply email me, ask your question. I'll, I'll take care of everything. Okay, so just to let you know and thank you for your patience in this. Uh, I, I, I was shocked to learn that I had this issue and it's a big, it's, it's a big fix. So hopefully I'll do that over the next week. Of course I am. Hi, my friend. Hope all is well. Yes, I'm doing well. Except for those little issues. Everything is well. I hope you are doing well as well. Arne Sorensen. Hi from Denmark. Uh, Mark Ayo. Good morning, Liron. Betty Ryan. Uh, hi from Augusta. Uh, GA. Yeah, I'll never remember, but I, I, I'm supposed to know what it is. I'm, I'm going to check. I always forget. Yeah, Georgia. Okay, I had a feeling. I just didn't want to guess. Um, Gabriel, hi from Rome, Italy. Jade says, ah, I'm so anxious. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Arpaches, hi from Istanbul. Well, the first doing great. I've loved seeing you focus on what you've been doing. I can really see how far you've progressed. Thank you so much. Thank you for saying that. Crispy, it's such a great uh, feeling to be connected to people all over the world. Yeah, definitely. I really enjoy that aspect. Um, greeting from Delaware, uh, MD. What is MD? I mean, Delaware is a state, right? Is there another one? Delaware, MD. Uh -huh, uh -uh -uh. Okay. I don't know what MD is, but that's fine. Um, probably something I'm, I'm unfamiliar with. I do remember it from a different live streams. Sorry if I forgot. Aparna, I will mail you my watercolor paintings. Uh, please review them on Saturday. I will really appreciate it. So uh, if you if you haven't mailed them, I won't review them for Saturday. Saturday is already filmed, but I do have a bunch of other paintings I want to review soon. So simply send them over. I will review them together, okay, in the next video, maybe in a, two weeks or something like that. Prince Palacio, no new paintings for me yet because I got so busy with school. I could probably work next week and would really love to share it with you. Yeah, cool. Uh, Rita Brata, am I there in the critique vid? Yes, you are. <laughs> and I find it very difficult to paint portraits in watercolor. Do you have any suggestions? So you're going to get all my suggestions as I paint. And yes, you are going to be in the critique video, my friend. Thank you for sending them over. Uh, Sarah, hi from Iran. Cool. Uh, welcome aboard, Sarah. Happy to have you here. Theresa, hi from the Philippines. Andrea Sims, I love your uh, drawing class and have signed up for watercolor class too. Learning so much. Thank you all, uh, are d all for all you're doing uh, for us. I want to make progress. Thank you so much, Andrea. And I believe you also had that issue with the email. Hopefully I solved it uh, quickly. Sorry about that. Uh, MD Maine, MD Maryland. Oh, okay. So I, so I, I figured it. Okay. There's Delaware in Maryland too. That makes sense. Okay. So I think we can get started here with the painting process. Now, before we get to the painting, I'm going to do something that I did also in, um, in that, uh, previous, uh, video I did with the car, which is mapping out the light and shadow. Okay. Mm. And I want to open up the live stream on my phone, even though I barely, um, I barely have any battery. Okay, I'll just wait. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I don't have any battery. I'll, I, I'd rather save it. Let's get rid of this. Um, so yeah, let's flip this over. Things you don't see off camera and don't interest you. Uh, so I'm going to map out the shadows, meaning I'm just basically going to do some lines to show where the light and shadow are. Now let me zoom in just a bit here using my uh, very uh, high technical skills of simply lowering my tripod. Okay, just a second, here we go. Good, so hopefully now you can better see. And don't worry, I'm gonna later move this square so you can actually uh, see more of the palette. But so here is our reference photo and I wanna mark where the light and shadow are. I'm gonna get started form the easiest spot, which is this area, because I see it very clearly. So I'm just putting in these lines. And what this will do is provide a guide for me to work off of when I'm in the thick of it, as they say, and I, and I can barely see what's going on and 
and it's hard it's hard the first challenge the first wash is uh indeed a challenge so i want to have some kind of a map to guide me i don't always do this but i do find that it's helpful very often especially for areas that aren't as clear like the hair so i can i know that i focus on what matters okay so this is all kind of highlights and just the left side is in the shadow so here we go by the way ruth says hi to everyone she left the studio for now but she sends her regards trust me on this one uh, this is all in the shadow of course okay it's the background we have quite a significant shadow here <gasps> like that that's actually connected to the shadows here. So let me mark some of these for us. And you see how it just helps us a bit. It's not always easy to navigate. So whatever you can use to help you with that is a good idea. Okay, now this I leave white, but it's actually not gonna be a paper white highlight. It's actually gonna, let's just go over it a bit. It's gonna be a core shadow. So I'm gonna explain about that in a second. But for now, just focus on mapping out those shadows with your lines. Um, I like to do this in particular for demos, but to be honest, if I'm just painting for myself, sometimes I'll, well, I'm too lazy to do that. And if I don't really need it, if it's not a very confusing reference, I'll just ignore it. Okay. Now notice my drawing. It focuses on the shapes of light and shadow. I don't actually uh, draw every single thing every single object i'm definitely not drawing this line one thing that uh, was a, a repeating issue with a lot of your paintings uh, with the critique video is that you a lot of people paint very literally what they see so for example if you see this eye then you're gonna paint the eyelid and the um, you know the um, all of the small details okay and all of the small creases, the shape of the eye, and that's fine. And the, all of the details, that's fine and all, but you don't wanna think in terms of details like this, in terms of eye, nose. What you wanna think is in terms of shape. So this is a shape, you see? So what I'm gonna draw is that shape, like this, going around the eye, getting all the way to this area where it's a highlight and then dipping back in the shadow. And then there's the shadow underneath it. You see, I'm thinking in terms of shapes and this is exactly what I did here. This is a shadow and it's connected to this shadow. The only highlight is this thin slice of uh, the eyelid. You see, and you wanna make sure that you work by shapes. I don't want you to draw, you see this, it's irrelevant, that line of the face. What's relevant is this is all in the shadow. And you can't you can't see it okay now sometimes it will be helpful to draw it as a guidance or if something actually goes on there but for this kind of a study where we're we're still trying to kind of simplify it you just don't need all of that information okay uh, let me know if that makes sense do the F in the chat if it makes sense um, hey Richard uh, don't worry it's okay that you're late I believe you also sent me a painting it's gonna be in the video uh, your connection is going weak. Yeah, that's just to be expected. Sorry about that. Um, <sighs> Belwar is not in Maryland. I don't know if I just, it's just my ears, but uh, volume is down. Yeah, I'm, I'm going a little quieter. Sorry about that. Hopefully you can still hear me well. I decided not to use my voice too much today. <laughs> so it's probably my fault. Let me try and fix that. I'm going to get my laptop a little closer. I'm going to get myself a little closer. And hopefully that'll help. Uh, but I'm trying to save my voice and make sure that, that it's doing well. So thank you so much for anyone who just joined. Uh, what I'm doing now, I did some shadow mapping, marking for myself where the shadows are. The next step is going to be uh, to start painting the details. Now there is a, a highlight here I don't want to miss. So now I kind of lost track of it. So we'll try. So this goes here, yeah, this is a shadow. And then on top of that, we have this highlight. I do wanna preserve that. This one's nice, I like that. So I'm gonna get rid of those lines. And for small highlights, yes, you can use like a masking uh, fluid and actually put it there and paint however you want. Uh, but for me, 
uh, I tend to just use negative painting to get around stuff. Okay, so I think we can get started. Hopefully everything is clear. If you have any questions, just let me know. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Helmet family asks, any Indians here? Yeah, we usually have representation from everywhere. So, so we're gonna get started with the first wash. Um, now, as I mentioned, I will pre-wet the entire paper. So it's gonna be uh, a bit of a challenge. Wet and wet isn't my strength at all. Uh, but I do wanna give it a try. And the trick to alleviate any issues wet and wet is to I just need some scrap piece of paper. Uh, where did I put all my scrap papers? No way I, got, I ran out of them. Wow, I used to have so many. Okay, I don't have many, but that's fine. So the trick is to use a lot of water because a lot of water gives you more time to respond, makes things easier. So let's go ahead and pre-wet everything. And I will need my trusty toilet paper. Uh, not toilet paper, uh, masking tape. Toilet paper is to the left. Um, and you see there is a bit of color uh, in the brush. That's actually fine and it works well. Luckily for us, it's not a blue, <laughs> that's my bad. But let me show you just how thoroughly I'm wetting this. Okay, really, it should be very wet. And this is uh, quite a thirsty paper. So I'm gonna wet everything, keep it at a bit of an angle. I like to hold hold the paper very often. Uh, I find that I get better control at it. It's less good for filming, to be honest with you, uh, but it is great for controlling the paint and changing the angle. So look at how wet the paper is, okay? That's how wet you want it. You see my ring light here. I have this uh, light on a, on a tripod. So even more, put more water. And now I'm gonna try and locate some patterns of light and shadow. And I actually don't care exactly what color I'm using for this. It's gonna be kind of a muted red, probably. So red with a bit of blue and a bit of yellow, but don't get too caught up on the colors. Now remember, big parts of this are black, so um, they're, they're gonna be covered later on. But for example, here, this is a, a gradual light to shadow. So I'm just gonna put a bit of it here, you see? See this? Just this gentle shadow will make a difference. And you have to remember that. We have a bit of a shadow here under that, where the uh, keystone is between the nose and the eyes. Let's get rid of this little debris piece. Add a bit more strength to it. I actually love the leftovers in my palette for this purpose. So here we go. This we don't need to move there, so we'll move it here. We have a very gentle uh, shadow here on the, uh, due to the uh, either a gentle smile or just the shape of the cheeks, see? Um, and bit of shadow around this area here. And because this area is black, you can go over it. You don't have to worry about it at all. Um, I will be very careful once I feel like this is starting to dry. Look, it's still very wet. But once I feel like this is starting to dry, I'll try not to do anything else, okay? Um, because once it starts to dry, you won't get those smooth transitions you're after, okay? So here we go. See, this is gonna slowly fade a bit. Uh, now I did lose a bit of the shape of the cheek, so let me recreate that with a bit more paint. And if the paint moved somewhere you don't want it, all you have to do is really grab another brush, dry, and lift it back, okay? Kind of like this. And then you can get rid of it if you want an area to be lighter than it currently is. Like for example, this area here, I want to be lighter, so I'm just picking that paint back up. Okay, like this. Um, I don't see any areas that need to be lighter at the moment. I'm pretty much, I, I think I did a decent job here. One area I wanna darken a bit is this beautiful shadow under the nose. The problem is it's a small area and the paper is still quite wet, so I'm running at a risk of it spreading out too much, okay? And you can see this shadow here, very gentle. This is why we're doing everything wet and wet right now, because we need that gentle control. So hopefully this is enough. Hopefully this is enough to create that illusion. We'll see. I may need to use a bit more paint, but right now we're pretty much in the monochromatic realm. Okay, it's just kind of a very gentle red. Now it still looks strange because we're, 
we're, it's an underpainting, okay? We don't have the context of these shadows. Once we get the context of the shadows, this is all gonna fall into place. One area I do wanna get rid of paint, and it's actually pretty important, is here on the nose. The nose is light, I don't need the paint there. So here we go. This is actually one of the lightest spots. And sometimes you will need to use toilet paper to really dry your brush and, and be able to lift. So that's what I was doing, here we go. Um, and mostly these, these gradual changes are great. Again, things are gonna fall into context the more we'll, um, the more, uh, we'll add shadows and this will dry. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Camera focus, please. <laughs> uh, it'll focus in just a moment. Now what I wanna do is actually dry this. Um, I want it to dry evenly and the tape does it, the tape, the, the hair dryer does a good job. So let me mute myself for just a few seconds, dry this and come back and address some of your messages. Okay, so we've gone through the stage, the critical stage where it might dry unevenly and everything is in its place now, you can see. Uh, let me show you. Uh, yeah, you, so you can see it's pretty much dry. This is the point we want it at. And uh, now we can move on to the next wash. But before that, let me see if you have any questions and let me once again reiterate the two important tips for this one. Tip number one use very wet paint. It's the one thing that will save you. You don't have to worry as much because uh, the, it's gonna take some more time for it to dry. So pre-wet the paper multiple times if needed. And second, start very light. Start with very light mixes here and, and work carefully. Put them where you think they should be. If it goes too, too dark or it moves into a place where it shouldn't, lift it with a bit of either a tissue, a brush or whatever. Um, and remember, at this point, yes, it's wet and wet, but you still have a lot of control. Okay, so don't be uh, scared. You still have quite a lot of control over what's going on on paper. Okay, uh, now let me uh, see what you're saying in the chat. Real quick. Um, okay, stay safe from the corona. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Hello from the Republic of Barnsley. Uh, John, yes, Deron, great to see you live. I love it from Tottenham in London. Cool. Marjorie Johnson, my uh, pumologist, cardio doctor, just got back from India. A disaster. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge what's going on there. Um, it's really terrible. Yeah, if you're there, stay safe. It's rough. Uh, Maggie, good to be watching you live from Brittany, France. I love that there's a place called Brittany in France. It's just such a cool word. Uh, when should I use uh, water spray instead of brush so uh, wet, to wet the paper? Um, so here's the thing. With a water sprayer, it's going to spray water unevenly. So what you will get is, let's say you sprayed some water and you paint, you may get some soft edges on the line you did and some hard edges. Um, so if you want everything to be very blended, like this example in the first wash where we need to get those soft transitions, I wouldn't use a, a sprayer. Uh, now, if you're doing a landscape and you want some kind of interest in the sky and you want an, a combination of broken lines and soft uh, transitions, then you use a, a sprayer. You can wet and also use a sprayer. 
because then some areas will be sharp, some areas will be soft. It's actually a great way of achieving a first wash where there's something like the sky. But for this in particular, we're not looking for that. We want to evenly work on the entire painting, okay? Now you'll see some of my results are kinda, it's okay, but for example, this area that I, I um, put a bit of a dark wash here, uh, kind of moved down. Um, this area turned out really nice, but it should reach all the way to the nostril, didn't. Uh, this is a little too much to the right. It should be a little more to the left, so we'll see, maybe we'll put some strength into it. But overall, it's a decent job and it's an optional step. Again, I could go straight into the darks, but to me, I wanted that additional optional step just to get some gradual transition underneath it all. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, Kaushik Sharma says, hi, I took your tutorial in Udemy on portrait painting. Are you using posterized layers here too? So this is not posterized. Um, this is actually just a picture the way it was, the way I saved it from uh, Pixabay, and you can find it again if you just uh, hit the link in the description box. Uh, this isn't posterized. The, the way you can tell is because there are these smooth transitions. What posterized does is you remove the number of values. So that means you get, for two values, the extreme, you get white and black. If you crank it up to three values, you'll get black, mid value, and white, and the transition between them is gonna be sharp. And the more you increase it, the more the, the more values are in the in-between, so the transition gets softer. When I use the posterize feature, I go for usually 5 or 7 or 12. That's kind of the sweet spot I found. So you will see a lot of sharp lines. Here you don't see them, which is why uh, it isn't posterized in this example. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ian says, so last time you... Uh, you said you used bulldog clips when you do outdoor painting. Why not use them in the studio? Uh, just because it's not windy. I use them because of the wind mainly, not to hold things in place just generally. Uh, Deep Krishan. Uh, oh, hey, it's been a while since I saw you. Uh, Kukureti, welcome aboard. Hello, sir. Domo, great to be back. Dave, uh, are you using Saunders? No, this is Arsh. Arsh Cold Press. Uh, Isabel Campana. Uh, you missed the highlight on the left eye that you wanted to preserve. Um... Oh no, that's fine, that's fine. I, I, okay, so I've gone over, so here's what's important to understand. I pre-wet the entire paper. I will no doubt get to places that I shouldn't, okay? Uh, a lot of the paint I put in the shadow covered this eyes highlight, this eyes highlight, that's perfectly fine. The most important thing for me is to get those smooth transitions in. The highlights will fall in the right context once I add the shadows, and you can always use opaque paint, but, uh, in this particular example, I'm actually fine with them going over the highlights. If you're planning on keeping any highlights, never pre-wet the entire paper. It's just there's no chance you'll be able to preserve them. There is, but it's very high, highly unlikely. What you can do is, again, use masking fluid. That's fine. If you want to work wet and wet on everything and use masking fluid to preserve the highlights, that's perfectly fine, but that's the only way. You won't be able to do that unless you do it this way. So uh, it's very unlikely. The moment I wet the entire paper is the moment I gave up on preserving a perfectly paper white highlight for all the small details, okay? Yes, this part is pretty much paper white, this part, this part, but not everything. It's, it's, there's no chance. Uh, so yeah, uh, let's see here. Ian, Liron, try to set your webcam to manual focus. It will stop searching for focus. Yeah, let's try and do that. Um, Logitech. Can I change it while I'm streaming? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, video setting. Um, advanced, I guess. Mm. White balance auto, gain auto, but I don't see a focus on auto. Oh yeah, here we go. Turn that off. Perfect. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's good. So let me see if I if it actually makes a difference. So if I play around with the focus, okay, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's auto now. Got it. Thank you for the tip. Uh, every day I figure new things out. The question is, is it in focus now? <laughs> so let me uh, let me figure that out for a moment, um, just to make sure. I hope to upgrade this camera soon. I don't know. I, the Logitech ones, I don't like them as much. Video setting, advanced, um, okay, here we go, webcam control. There's so many options, so many clicks to get through just to get to the focus bar. 
Okay, okay, yeah, that's, let's see here. So bear with me as I play around with the focus, okay? Just to make sure it's the ideal. So if I hit the auto, will it actually find it? Okay, yeah, good. And stop, perfect, okay, I think that's better. Oh, it's not, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. It's gonna take a few seconds, my bad. And I don't know why it's so slow to react. So I know it sounds incredibly easy what I'm trying to do now, but for some reason, okay, yeah. I think that's good enough. Yeah, that's fine. Sorry about that. It's going to be a bit of a more mellow stream today. I'm <laughs> just what I, I'm a little tired for this week. So uh, sorry about that. Uh, a little talking, a little quieter. Um, Johnny two, could you add a darker value into the first wet and wet wash or is it too dangerous? Generally you could. And I do this very often, but this time, for me, it's dangerous. Because all of the shadows are far darker, I'd rather let this dry and then continue. Okay? Uh, so, yeah, it is... Uh, it's a risk. It's a big risk. And for this one in particular, I don't want to risk it. Um, Helmet finally says, Humans stay safe from Corona. Stay at home and watch Sir video and learn art. I'm Sir. So, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone, stay safe. I can see the highlight in the left eye. That's fine. You will see it once I add shadows. Deepam, you're amazing. Keep up. Thank you uh, with the good work. Thank you. Now, oh, Alessandro, my friend, how are you? Well, uh, highly run nice drawing. By the way, I just updated the patrons list for the video's outro. So uh, you're in there finally. Sorry about the delay. Rita Brata. Hey, I have observed that in most of the paintings you start directly on dry paper, but when I try it, I tend to take more time and the paint dries uh, and I try to wet it again. Any solution? Yeah. So, yes, you, you nailed it. Uh, I tend to uh, get started with wet on dry uh, because I just find it easier and I find the colors look better and, and more saturated and wet and wet. If you're gonna do that, you have to mix a big wash that's very dry, a very wet wash. So the first wash can't be too dark, okay? You have to mix a lot of paint, a lot of water, and then a lot of water on top of that, okay? That's the best tip I can give you. Also work at an angle, it can help. Let's jump into uh, the next wash, the next stage. Um, I'll try doing my best here. We'll see how it goes. Um, Going by the feel I get here, I'm going to keep this process a little intuitive. So sorry if I can't explain every step I'm making. But here's what I love about palettes that had some paint in them. I just added red and yellow and we got a skin tone. This is a beautiful, beautiful uh, skin tone. If you want to make it a little more red or more pink, add a bit more red to it. See? And maybe add a bit more water to it. Now, I'm going to keep those shadows pretty high key. Okay? Add a bit of blue there. Skin tones, what you have to understand, are not perfectly pink or perfectly orange uh, or perfectly uh, brown. It's usually a very muted iteration of them. It's very rare to see in nature um, skin tones that are um, just pure bright. You can, uh, colors, generally, sorry, not skin tones. Colors that are very bright, bright green, bright blue. It's very rare to see, which is why beautiful flowers and birds are, are amazing to look at. It's just a rare occurrence. Now, here's what you have to understand with this wash. I'm actually painting shadows. Um, so I can be a little freer with the color, but I do want to keep it in the realm, at least, of skin tone. So let, let's give it a try. We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to start here with a fairly um, light wash for this top part. You see how, you know what, we can, hmm, we can, let's start from here. There's this shadow here. It's a very nice looking shadow. And I wonder if I can capture that. And it has a lot of these small individual brush marks for the different strands of hair. Um, and they just look beautiful. And I do want to show that. Okay, so this goes here. This is a shadow on the face, okay. It does have a slightly smooth edge, so I'm just going to use a bit of water to move this paint around like this. Just one go. This doesn't matter because it's going to be black. Okay, just smooth and smoothing this edge. And then you see all of the hairs cast this very interesting shadow that I do want to capture here. 
kind of like this. It's a bit of a risky move what I'm doing here. I'm not starting with a big and clear shape. I'm actually starting with a bit of a smaller one, uh, but I think it will work in my favor. Okay, and then maybe get a bit of a more solid kind of a thing there. And now we'll continue with this line up. The reason I started here was because I wanted to bring this line from the bottom and all the way here. Now it shouldn't make any sense right now. Okay, don't worry about it. It will start making sense the more we make progress. Okay, so this goes here. And then we have a couple of stray strands here as well. So let's get some of those in there. But what I actually care about is this shape here, this big shape that I'm going to work on. Okay, that's the one thing I do care about. Um, so a bit of red, a bit of blue. Again, I'm going quite intuitive here. So you'll have to forgive me if I don't have a great way of explaining what I'm doing. Um, some processes are just going to be like that. Water, a lot of water here, just to help this edge be a little looser, help the paint move. So I used too much water and it pushed the paint. So I'm going to put back some more paint into the area. And then I can start working on this shadow uh, of the eye socket. I'm going to use a bit of blue here to turn this into a shadow that feels a little darker. Okay. And connect it to this side here. Now again, you'll have to forgive me because again, I don't know what's going to come out of this one. And to be honest with you, it's a process I'm coming into knowing I'm challenging myself. Okay. So if it's not perfect, if I don't explain it perfectly, that's fine. There's always that added layer of explaining what I'm doing that takes up quite a lot of resources, actually. You'd be surprised sometimes. Um, okay, so cut through here. I'm gonna stop this shape right through there. And then look, because I drew the shapes, I know that I can connect it to this shadow. I'm working in shapes rather than in objects. So I'm not painting an eye, I'm painting the shapes created by the light and shadow patterns in the eye. And that's the important distinction you wanna make here. Now I'm going to actually fill in most of the iris and, and all of this area with paint like this. I'm going to leave very few highlights there. Maybe cover everything up. I can probably cover the right side of the eye too. So let's just go for it like this. Bit of a lighter paint there. Bit of a paint here. Now look at this beautiful shadow cast by the uh, what do you call these? I forgot. The lashes, the eyelashes. Beautiful, beautiful. And you want to show that. Now mix more paint fast because this spot starts to dry. And here we got to start working a little faster. So let me dry, uh, not dry. Let me mix a bit more paint, a bit more of all of my primary colors. Because now I really have to think. Now, again, I'm using natural colors here, so I'm not going to go green on us or anything like that. I'm keeping it quite uh, neutral or at least as neutral as I can. But I do need quite a large quantity. So, And you see the mixing takes time. So take your time with it. Okay. Now, I did lose some of the nuances here. So let me fix that a bit with this shape. And actually, there are quite a few cast shadows from the from this part on the white of the eye. So we'll get that in as well. I know where I'm going to get a background here, but I'm fine with that. So I want a bit blue. I kind of missed. Uh, I wanted to mix a bit of blue and I wasn't able to. Now, remember, because there's an, a wash underneath it, it does make... Uh, blending a little harder. As soon as you have a wash underneath, uh, the paper is less receptive to your technique. So you have to take that into consideration, be a little careful. Okay. Now for the neck and this area, let's go a little faster here. I don't want this process necessarily to be super fast. And you know what, let me rotate this. It's going to be a little confusing, but uh, I think it'll be better because now I need the paint to move down. Okay. So we got the nose here. Let me rotate the reference to it will help us. Good. 
So, go like this. <laughs> it's a bit of a complex process, I do admit. Mm. And I want to take you back to the previous uh, portrait I did and, and have you think of this idea. Want to record? <laughs> there we go. Uh, don't worry if the technique isn't perfect, meaning if it dries on you in some spots. What I want you to do is worry about getting the right value in the right place, okay? Um, I don't care so much if you get uneven washes because that's something you'll, you'll have to work on. You'll have to improve your technique. What I do care more about is that you get the right value in the right place. And here it's fairly simple. We have pretty much two values with very slight variation between them. Um, so let me get rid of this lip real fast. Like this. And there's a bit of a twist here. Okay, kind of messed up the shape. You'll have to forgive me. Hopefully it won't make too big of a difference. You see how my wash here is getting uneven? That's fine. Don't worry about that. I'm actually slowing myself down. To talk about what I'm doing and that's never a good idea. Uh, so it definitely takes up a bit of resources there. Now for this. And there are two lines we need to blend now. So fast, we have to work fast. One of them is uh, this one. And the other one is uh, this one. Like that. Okay. And now I only noticed that I kind of messed up the right side of the nose. Let me go over it with some water just to lift back some of the strength here. There's no reason for this part of the shadow to be so strong. Like that. And I'm just gonna do this. Pick back some of it. Okay, well, we'll, we'll solve it. Don't worry. We'll solve it in, in, uh, in, uh, in a while. Now I actually have to continue working here. Well, there's no pressure. There's no pressure now. Because all I need is to paint this shape and it's not connected to anything. There's just sharp lines, so I'm gonna do that. Let's use a bit more blue here. Make it make it more dominant on the blue side. And this you have to mix a lot, okay? This is the mistake I made. I should have mixed a little more paint there. Uh, and I didn't mix enough. And I also missed the nuance of the edge here. This line, the lower it goes here, it needs to be a little blurrier. Okay, so I'm going to do that now, and this looks much, much better. Okay, good. I think this this works well, I think. Yes, I did lose some of the shadows here. <laughs> Trying to pull this, these together without ruining the, the smoothness of the wash. I, honestly, the thing I'm doing with the fingers, I, I don't know exactly how to explain it. It's, again, very intuitive most of the time. Uh, I just know that by smearing it around a bit. Phew, there we go. <laughs> One heck of a brush mark. And connect it to this, to that. Let's rotate. It's gonna be a nightmare to edit this video for a time lapse snippet, but it's gonna work. It's gonna look good. Yeah, okay, so that is good. That is good. So hopefully we get something now. There's quite a lot to fix in the lips. We will get to that. We also have the other eye. But you saw that was just one wash, okay? And you wanna learn how to do these kinds of washes. They're not easy. And by the way, I mixed some of, I missed some of the nose here. Uh, this entire area is in the shadow too. So let's try and do this gracefully. Now that was ungraceful. Did you see me dropping a drop of paint on the paper? Um, let's see here. That's good. We will all pretend there's nothing here. Um, I did want uh, this to be a part of the nose, like that. And I think we're good on that front. Now, there are a few gentle shadows. I will, I will take a break in a moment because I want to read your chats. 
Uh, plus, okay, so the lip here, the lower lip, this is also a shadow, like that. This entire area is in the shadow. And then there are the creases on the lips, like that. And it leaves a smaller highlight, okay? That's very important too. And I always talk about anatomy. Here, anatomy helped me with the lip. And let me explain why. I know it doesn't interest everyone, but so the lip is basically, there's the upper lip, right? And the lower lip. Now the lower lip, the way it's structured, if I'm not mistaken, it has two main bumps here. I think it does. And because the light comes from this side, what you get is shadow on this side of the bump, AKA this area. And some of it also casts on this side of the bump. So you get shadow here. So because I have my anatomical knowledge, when I look at the reference photo, I actually understand why there's shadow here and I immediately see it. And you can see it here. See this shadow right here. Okay, same on this section. There's also a bit of shadow. Now the upper lip, because it's facing down, if you look from side view, uh, the upper lip faces down while the lower lip faces up, right? So something like this. Because it faces down, it's in the shadow fully because the light comes from the top. Okay, so it's in the shadow. And this is why you need that anatomical knowledge. And even just a little bit will go a long way. Okay. Now let's take a break. I'm extremely sweaty. Let's see what you're writing in the chat. This is a very interesting process. Um, let's see here. Alessandro asks, do you ever uh, use Pinterest for your reference pictures? Um, not usually because they're copyrighted on Pinterest. What I use Pinterest for is um, references for anatomy. So when I do anatomy studies for myself and I know I'm not going to potentially sell it, yes, I will use Pinterest. Um, I also use it just for inspiration and ideas, but not as pure uh, photos to paint. Ian Jackson, uh, is it a medicine as it does not uh, quite look like a human face. I don't know what a medicine is, but hopefully it will look like a human face soon. Uh, Yedukul A, how do you deal with a lack of motivation to draw? Um, it's a very interesting question. I don't experience it. I do experience lack of motivation in other fields. Um, and that's tricky. That is tricky. I do believe that consistency breeds motivation. So if you just force yourself to sit down at least and try and draw, you will start getting motivated. What most people face from what I kind of hear and talk to people is they don't have the motivation, so they don't even try. They don't even sit down. So if you were not going to sit down, if you just think about how you don't have motivation, you won't get motivation. The only way to really get motivated is to first force yourself to sit down and try. Try manually without any desire or any passion. But do that every day for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. It will come at some point. And the thing that increases motivation the most, to be honest with you, is actually success. So if you're practicing and you're slowly building success, you will start feeling more motivated. Okay? Hope that takes helps. Um, ahoy! Abigyan says, welcome aboard. Vespa, Liron, do you trace the reference from a light table? I actually trace this from my Mac. So I just put the Mac's uh, brightness all the way through and just trace it before the live stream, like uh, 20 minutes before. I'll do that very often for um, s studies I do for, for these kinds of streams. I don't, there is no need for me to start measuring and doing um, complex uh, proportions. It's, it's important to practice that and I do practice it in anatomy especially but not for these uh, demos. The demos here are about the painting stage, so I don't mind. Kaushik, what software app are you using for this video cast? OBS, I'm using OBS. Um, Marjorie Johnson, frankly, I think Liron should become a motivational speaker, same age as my grandson, but has a passion he follows like no other, kudos. Thank you. I actually see uh, quite a lot of people who have that passion, they follow it, uh, but I'm, I'm happy to have that, so thank you so much. Abigyan uh, Srivastav, hi, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you so much for asking, how are you? Uh, Ian Jackson, how about uh, some 
Caput Mortem and Orange Red. Yeah, it really looks like Caput Mortem. Uh, Jade Moonchild, this brush is so soft, it uh, <laughs> caresses my soul. Yeah, it's funny. It is a really soft brush. Most of my brushes at the moment are quite soft. Uh, though they do have some spring to them, I'll say. Uh, Priyanka says, hi. Dave says, it's actually genius using two brushes for painting rather than the constant washing out. Yeah, I learned that from Steve Mitchell from the Mind of Watercolor. And it was such an aha moment for me. And if you go to one of his videos, you'll see my comment on there. I saw him do that using one brush for blending, one brush for painting. And I was like, you can do that? And, and I was so shocked that I never thought of it. What ends up happening is I usually put the brush in my mouth while I do this, so that's fun. By the way, uh, there, there is a lot to do here yet, so don't worry if it, if there, it feels still um, incomplete. Uh, there's this gentle shadow here. There's quite a lot to do here. We're going to blend some shadows, fix some shapes. We're, we're maybe 60%, we're not, not more than that, okay? Um, uh, thank you so much to anyone who's here. I just want to say once again, I see 123 people. Um, if you can drop a like on the video, it really helps it get to more people. So thank you for that. Um, uh, Romero Dubost, I see your logic in constructing the shadows. Yeah, definitely. Krish, uh, I'm from India. Hey, welcome aboard. Uh, Unicorn, hello. Vespa, Liron, what pigments of Daniel Smith are our best three primary colors? French Ultramarine, Quinacridone Rose, uh, and I will say... Um, the yellow, I, I never remember. Some people will say lemon yellow. I personally, I have a personal uh, uh, hate to the lemon yellows, but you probably will do well with lemon yellow. What you want to do is mimic the cyan yellow magenta from the printer. Uh, you can usually mix everything from that. The pearl and red I'm using is actually not a really good primary color for the current constellation, uh, which is why this isn't, well, no, that's because of how I mix it. But generally speaking, yeah, um, I think French ultramarine, well, no. Actually, let me take that back. You need the cyan magenta yellow. So what you do need is phthalo blue, quinacridone rose, and then lemon yellow. These will be good primaries. Now, if you don't want that, you can go for something more like French ultramarine, pearl and red, and yellow ochre. I find that it's a little more muted and nice. I like the yellow ochre a lot. Even though now I'm using a mix of yellow ochre and Indian yellow. But these are all options I'm throwing at you. I love New Gamboge as a yellow by Daniel Smith, but it won't produce the same thing as Lemon Yellow. So New Gamboge is kind of like Indian Yellow. You can see it here at the bottom of my palette. Right here. Right here. <laughs> um, yeah, Yellow Ochre is much more muted, but I love it, so, yeah. Um, da -da -da -dum. Uh, wait, 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 the chat jumped on me. I actually like that the chat moves a little slower today. I can as answer everyone. It's really nice. Um, oh, Rakshan, my friend, is here. Hi, I'm back. Do you remember me? Of course I remember you among Rakshan. If you sell that painting, uh, for how much will you sell? Um, that's a good question. So it's pretty small. That's probably the smallest size I'll paint. Minimum. So if I just throw a price out there, it'll be maybe 200 bucks minimum, but who knows? It could be more, it could be less. A lot of it will be affected by how I feel about it. So if I really like something, I'll, I'll increase the price. So if I look at it once it's done and I'm like, ah, it's, it's, it's much too good for that, then I'll, I'll usually increase it by 100 bucks, 200 bucks, whatever. By the way, you can go to my gallery and see my pricing there, lirongallery.com, one word. Um, Unicorn says, looks like a masterpiece already. Thank you. Laura Merrifield, good morning from California, everyone. I'll catch up later. Thank you for being here. Uh, good night from India, says Rakshan. What time is it in India now? Let me know. Uh, Vespa, wow, so beautiful. Unicorn brights, literally 7.20. Uh, why good night? Well, I don't know the, the time zone. So, uh, Unicorn, are you from India? And are you saying it is uh, 7.20? <laughs> uh, uh, it's night in some other places, I guess. Debbie Ann, thank you again for sharing your process, Liron. It makes me feel braver to start my next painting, and your painting looks beautiful already. Thank you. And look at the bottom section. Like, it's not perfect. And that's fine. There is a lot of uh, pa patchiness to it. Um, again, if you want to avoid that, you need to start with wetter paint. You need to have a sprayer with you. I actually ran out of water and forgot to refill it for this session, so my bad. Um, and you have to really be on it. But it's fine if you don't. It's fine if some parts of the wash are uneven. Some will argue that's part of the grace of watercolor. I mean, look at this section. A bit of cauliflower. It's really nice. I like that. 
So don't be too uh, worried about that kind of a thing. Um, Dave says already looks great. Thank you so much. Jade says this mouth is so good. Thank you. Yeah, I I think I, I nailed it pretty much. Yeah, it looks looks good to me. I think maybe a little darker around here, but we'll see. Uh, Mark kind of looks like there is a finger coming out of the right side of the nose. <laughs> I don't see it, but it's funny. It's funny to imagine. Let me see. Oh, I get it. Yeah, it's because of that unevenness. Yeah, that's fine. I can actually fix that if I just put a bit more paint over it. Uh, we'll see in a moment. Let's see if I can fix it now. I think it'll be okay. So all I need is just a bit of that same kind of a wash. And then in theory, if I just cover this area up a bit, uh, it should be enough to make that finger disappear, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, I'll just make sure that the edge here is blended. There we go. Like this. And, and a lot of things are fixable in watercolor. Don't say no. Don't say no f to the paint. Like, don't, don't tell the paint, no, I don't want you to be fixed, okay? Uh, I think this worked out nicely. Um, this is looking great. Thank you, John. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Ian Jackson says mannequin head. Oh, okay. Not man, said mannequin head. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's actually real. Um, uh, as a Mina, hi Leron, I'm curious, do you ever get anxious from watercolor, time-based painting? Yes, yes, of course, I do. I do, and you see, I work fast. With time, you learn to translate this anxiousness to just doing, okay? It's so just practice every single day, and it, it will translate to, to, I guess, determination or whatever, you know, just good feelings that will lead your painting in a good way. Um, but the, the anxiousness, is, it's an inevitable part when you're getting started. And by the way, look at how weird this wash started here, went all the way through here and back through there. It's, it's, it's an interesting one. Um, success is totally the best motivation. Nothing feels better and more encouraging. Yeah, Susan Lin, uh, I have to find a wider mechanical pencil. Is there a company that makes wider lid from Mac pencils? Uh, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. Just search even Amazon wide grip mechanical pencil. I'm sure there is. I know a lot of people need it due to um, different um, elbow issues and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. And, and hand and wrist issues. Well, first, what brand brush are you using today? Um, so the first one was Leonard, and then I used the Skodas. That's pretty much it. Minimal today. Uh, Ankana says, hi Leron, love your videos. Do you use any oils or acrylics in your paintings? No, not at the moment. Olive first, Nicolazzo Yellow is my favorite uh, yellow by Daniel Smith. Yeah, so I like it for some uses, but very, but I don't know why it's so nickel -y. It's hard to explain, but I, if, if, for people who never used it or saw it, it's, it's so strong in a way. I know Steve, Mich Steve Mitchell from the Mine of Watercolor likes it. Uh, it will work good in terms of mixing. I just, the color is so strong sometimes. Um, Deep Krishan says, a beautiful painting. Thank you. Quast Quastas. Uh, Maniath says, hello, Nancy G, to me this painting looks way better than you're giving yourself credit for. Yeah, I'm, of course, I'm just seeing all the small inaccuracies, but the painting itself looks good. I uh, would love to see you paint, uh, Maggie McNevin would like to see you uh, paint a really large piece. What is uh, the largest you painted? Uh, the largest I painted was around uh, 120 centimeters on 80 centimeters. So you divide it by 2.5 and you'll get the inches. Uh, so 120, 2.5, I guess that'll be around 50 inches on 80, 30 or 28, something like that, inches. Not that big, but I mean quite big for a watercolor. Um, okay, I can't read that message, Shiva Balak, I just can't see it. Oh yeah, it's just, it's just, it says dick. I guess that's not a nice message, we'll see. If, you, if you're gonna spam, I'm gonna... Uh, remove your messages, but for now it's just an innocent, weird, uh, cursive writing dicks, basically. We'll ignore it for now. <laughs> Shelley Pryor Fine Art. Imperfection is what makes it interesting. Yes. Now, Alessandro, the picture is actually hard to paint. Yes, it is, especially her right eye. I'm really curious about how you will do that. Oh, man, now the pressure is on. Soon I'll have to go, but I'll watch it later. Uh, the like is there in advance, as always. Thank you so much, Alessandro. Uh, Aparna, it's looking so surreal already, it's 7.30 here in India. Uh, Isabel Campania, I really hate lemon yellow as well. Nickel, uh, Marjorie, nickel ago yellow, ezo yellow, makes uh, great darker colors. Yeah, that's for sure. That and, um, and um, uh, yellow ochre are good for dark warms. 
uh, nine in Thailand. Cool, Anna. Okay, so here's the thing. I'm going to stop now. Uh, Aparna, I'll continue with your message after we continue. Let's get this going. I know a lot of people prefer the painting over the talking, so we'll do that. So we have a gentle shadow here. We have the eye. Let's start with the eye. The thing we've been all waiting for. Now for this left section, um, I am going to use a bit more blue because it's more in the shadow of the hair, I guess. We'll see. We'll see. I'll go with my intuition again. I'm trying to best verbalize what I'm doing, but uh, it's not always easy. So, it's interesting. What I see here is this kind of a triangular shape, actually. So, if I go like this, and I'm stopping at the hair because there's a highlight there, so I can actually afford to stop it there. I'm seeing this kind of a triangle, like that. And it does connect to uh, a shadow here. It goes all the way to the, to the edge without that many highlights. And then uh, this continues um, all throughout here. I can actually look at my photo. I don't need to look in the computer. Come on. Um, like this. Notice how I didn't draw any eyebrows pretty much. or Because again, I'm not going with objects. I'm going with shapes of light and shadow. And if you take anything from this process is this. Focus on the shapes of light and shadow. Don't get caught up in the each and every individual detail of the face, okay? Focus on the shapes. Um, now, what I'm going to do, I think, is cover everything but the highlights here. Because it's a relatively light value I've got. And I know it may seem a little too dark. Actually, I'm going to cover this too. And I'm going to use a slightly lighter wash. And I'll probably have to go over it again later because it's not going to be dark enough. But see, this, this entire area is really pretty much in the shadow. So here, even here, this is definitely in the shadow. This, this is pretty much all in the shadow. See? And once I'll put in the eyelids, it will make more sense. Okay? Oh, yes, this is a little more in the shadow. Uh, actually, this should be a little more blended of an edge. It's not that important. It's a minor area, but let's let's blend this a bit more. Okay, yeah. So a lot of the beauty here will come in the next wash. I promise something nice is going to come out of this one. Let's make this shadow a little bigger here. Uh, this is a shadow. And I think for now we're good. Okay, try and see beyond the unevenness between these two washes. Uh, it will make sense later. Let me try and alleviate that a bit, like this. Um, so yeah, you see how dry it is? There is no time for wet and wet now. So I'm just going to let it dry and slowly work my way around this. Now, let me make a correction that uh, I think is important. You see the tip of the nose, um, and that, that happens to me often. It, the, it, the shadow shouldn't get so high, so I'm just going to wet it. And go like this. We'll try lifting it. Right now it seems pretty persistent. And I actually have a an ace up my sleeve. So that I may be able to lift it properly. And that ace is a brush that uh, John gave me. It's a little better for scrubbing and lifting. Because it's such a short uh, sables. You see here? Such short hairs. So let me try it out. It actually helped me quite a bit so far. Thank you so much once again, John. And there we go. That's nice. That is nice. It actually works. So these short haired uh, brushes are really good for that purpose. Okay. There we go. Now, let's continue with the nose. While we're at it, um, I want to add some definition to the nostrils here. Because there are some slightly darker areas. Let's add a bit of yellow. It's a little too purpley for my taste. Uh, everything is a little too purpley. And bit of this yellow, kind of a nice mix of all the yellows here, a bit of this red. Let's see what we get here. You see there is a bit of a stronger shadow next to the nostril here. Now here I'm not going to bother because uh, it's just going to mess me up. So I'm going to keep it like that for now. I'm going to use the same brush. I have no choice to blend out some of that edge here like this. Minor difference, but it is going to be noticeable. Um, 
And if you want to really nitpick, let's try fixing the shape of the nose even more. So the shadow on the front of the tip is a little stronger. I mean, right around here. But there is this small gap. I can actually use this opportunity to put in the nostril a little stronger. So let's do that. And add a bit of a stronger shadow around here. And even add a bit of a stronger shadow around here. Now this is all in the shadow, so you're not supposed to see a lot of it. So let's blend it right in so that it is there, but it's quite loose, okay? Uh, here as well. There we go, like this. This looks good. So just to give the nose a bit more of definition, now I forgot once again to blend that top part. Keep forgetting, but here we go. That's much, much better. And you get a bit of that reflected light. See how the edge is a little lighter still? Now I don't have my autofocus on, so sorry about that. See, there's a gap here. And you can see that gap here. It's very gentle, but it is there. A little lighter. So it's dark for the nostril, dark for the shadow on the tip of the nose, and a bit of a sliver of a lighter area there. Okay, these are the nuances you want to pay attention to and pick your battles. In one process, you'll focus on one a little more than the other. In a different process, you know, you won't capture everything. Like, I missed a lot of nuances here in the neck. And look at how patchy my wash is. That's fine. This annoys me, so I'm going to try and straighten that out. So that same uh, brush for blew my nose on that. That's disgusting. And I'm going to try and scratch that right off. That's perfect. John, my friend, you did a great job. That Yeah, okay, that's good. You did a great job with these brushes, they, they do, they, they're really good. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. Um, I think we're, we're good for now. Let's continue with this section and then we'll uh, do some questions and then we'll do some final touches, okay? So for the hair, I believe it's light. So I'm gonna kind of imagine it to be blonde, but again, don't go with yellow. <laughs> Use yellow as a dominant color still keep it quite muted. That's how you preserve the color harmony. A limited palette and also quite a uh, subdued selection. Now look, don't draw each and every strand of hair. Draw the shape. That's the key takeaway, okay? That's the mistake I saw a lot of people again made uh, during the, in the critique video. I'll, I'll comment on it. You don't have to paint each and every strand of hair. It's just the general shape, okay? Now for the shadows, let me add a bit of blue there and darken the area where it is indeed darker. See? Like that. Some of the strong shadows do go a little higher, so let's do that as well. Right through here. Now let's go back to a bit of a lighter value and do some of these hairs here and that that pretty much puts it in the right context in my opinion i think that's good so you see very minimal overwork just put the overall again instead of painting each and every hair strand put the overall pattern see this zigzaggy pattern just go like this and that's it you don't need to go over it a million times that's what I saw a lot of people do. Um, now let's read some of your messages and then we'll continue. Um, and by the way, if you're new here, uh, please subscribe and thank you so much for being here. Um, okay, so Aparna. I hate lemon yellow too. It takes away the depth and value of the painting, I feel. Yeah, you could make it work. There's no reason for it to take the depth. It's a very subjective choice to me, at least, to not like it. Shelley Pryor Fine Art, say yes to the mess, indeed. And and take a few steps back. If you like it, it looks good, and you're, you're good. Shouldn't be perfect. It's okay. It doesn't have to be. Aishik says it's 7 p.m. in India. Yes, yes, yes. I see people saying their time. 3 p.m. in the UK. So India must, okay, yeah, India may have more than one time zone. I mean, India is pretty big. 
Marjorie, beware, uh, don't watch Leron when trying to get sleep at night. Sometimes I just have to get back up and paint. Leads to tired mornings with puppy nagging me to get up. Yeah, sorry about that. Jade Moonchild, I think Renekadon Gold is perfect. Yeah, it's a beautiful color. Uh, okay, ours. We're going to skip that. Pragya, hi Leron, it's beautiful. I've learned much from your tutorials on tonal values. Thank you so much from India. Thank you. And I hope this one in particular helped... Uh, help you with the wet and wet a bit because it's something I don't show a lot of so when I do show it it's uh, hopefully helpful uh, Jade not a fan of lemon yellow or viridian. Yeah, viridian is tricky, but I love turquoise especially dark ones Yeah, those are beautiful Daiji. Ah, I'm late. This is a beautiful portrait. Thank you Jade love warm colors and a lot of the magic is in the combination. Okay, so you have both warm and cool That's actually quite important even in this area, you have cool in the middle and warm in the around surrounding areas. And a lot of it is just experience. I know that it looks good when I do that, you know. By the way, we'll do this wet and wet. Let's see if we can pull it off in a moment, wet and wet. So we'll do a bit more of that. Um, Rajsi, hi. Uh, I'm here first time from uh, Gujarat, India. So welcome aboard. Thank you for being here. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. I have tons of other processes like these. Also videos that aren't as talkative as the live streams. Pui Junyan Mo, hello, hello, welcome aboard. Jeff Arts, good one, subscribe to my YouTube channel too, I'll check it out. Jeff Arts, uh, I don't know if I can, let's, let's, I'm gonna open it up for later. I will check it out, I promise. Uh, Red Sea, yeah, it is awesome, thank you. Mahender uh, Taneja, please uh, make of me. <laughs> Do you want a portrait of you? Uh, it's funny. Maybe one day I'll paint everyone, who knows. Sophia. Watching this helps me learn. Thanks for the live stream. Marjorie, the drawing shift as new shadows are added it gives me problems with trying to figure out what color will become. Any suggestions? Drawing shift as new shadows. Hmm. So when you do, when the paint dries, does it look different than you planned? Is that what you mean? Uh, let me know. I'm curious to hear. I'm not sure I know what you uh, mean by that. So if you could clarify. <clears throat> drawing shift as new shadows are added. Hmm. Zaid Thakur, hey Liron, hey Zaid, how are you? Uh, is there any Indian? There is Indian yellow and there are a lot of Indian people in the chat. Um, yes, Ian Jackson. Liron, do you use a magic clean sponge to clean off bits you don't want? So actually, uh, John just got me another package with a clean sponge. So I'll, I'll definitely use that, uh, the magic uh, clean sponge for watercolor. So thank you once again, John. I will definitely uh, give it a try. Uh, Dave, Liron, how do you fix uh, patches in the larger areas? Or should I say prevent? So to prevent them, the same thing. Use a lot of water, use a bit of a, an angle, and be very mindful. That's the main thing. Because it's hard, you will need to simultaneously analyze what you're going to paint. So I'm going to paint this and that and this and that and paint around this shape and do this and work fast at the same time. It's not always easy, okay? Trying to analyze both. So you will get uneven work. Now you can correct it. And let me try, I was thinking about it earlier. Let me just get a mix here of some of my colors. A bit of blue, a bit of red, and we can try fixing a bit of it. Okay, so uh, a bit of everything here. And let's see if I can fix some of that. So here there's a bit of patchiness. So I'm just gonna put some paint over it, like this. And then blend some of their edges, and maybe that'll help a bit. See, uh, for the areas that are extra light. Now, to be honest, you can't really solve it. It's done. What's done is done. Uh, but yeah, it's the speed mainly. Work fast whenever necessary. Do this angle thing. See, uh, uh, you can see the wetness. Here we go. So it's starting to dry, but it's a bit wetter. Hopefully, that'll solve some of the patch that you saw there. But again, think of it in the context of, do you see it from afar? It makes sense. That's the most important part to me. Uh, not to everyone, I know. Uh, so let's do this. Now I'm gonna take this all the way till the end and then we'll continue with some of your questions. So I promise we'll do this wet and wet. So let's go for it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to pre-wet this area. Not only in the shadow, but also a bit to the right and to the left. Let me show you. Can you see? There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to start injecting some paint in there. And so we'll get a smooth transition. Starting from the center and to the sides, okay? I can use a bit stronger paint here, it seems. 
And what this is going to do is dry lighter. And it's going to blend out a bit. Okay. It does, should connect here. Um, and if you want to help it move even more, just use a bit of water and kind of expand it. Okay. And we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Okay. Uh, but if you pre-wet and then put the paint in, that's another way of doing it. Okay. Uh, so that's that. Now let's do some work on the eyes because the eyes need to be darker. This wash is a nice kind of basic one, but I'm going to darken the eyes more. Okay. So now I need strong paint and you see it's, it barely moves on the palette. See no flow. Okay. Let me show you just for comparison's sake. See this, this doesn't move. Okay. And this is what you need for the darkest shadows. So let me mix that blue, red, yellow, and more blue to top it off. And with this, I'm going to work on the eyes. So we have this, the center here, it's quite dark. And if I'm seeing correctly, it actually connects to the lashes and everything above. I need to be careful not to smear this. This is still wet. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it does connect here. So we can make that connection to the eyelashes and connect it to the shadow here in the corner of the eye. Now I may have gone a little too dark, so let me add just a bit of water there. And we'll do the part that's around, see, like this. Now this looks really, really nice. And let's use a bit of water and some wetter paint to kind of blend this, you see? And this is all in the shadow here and there. And to be honest, this should be darker, like this. You see how it starts to fall into place? Shadow above the eye. Here should be a little stronger. Okay, it's a bit hard to see in the video, but if you look at the original photo, you'll see it. And this is pretty much it for this section, I believe. I do want to fix this a bit. I think this should connect here. Just notice now. Okay, that's good. This is also in the shadow. Like that. There we go. Um, and yeah, okay, very important. The bottom section here is also quite dark. I actually missed that earlier. All of this is in the shadow, okay? So something like this. It's a beautiful eye. It's really, a, I don't know, it's a satisfying process to me now. Um, yeah, okay, now for the other eye. And we're gonna mix some more paint. I'm going to try here to have it kind of the same temperature as the shadow itself. But it's a bit warm, kind of rusty, kaput morton kind of a thing. Let's uh, see what we got now. So this is way too uh, cool. Let's add a bit more red. Yeah, that's better. It's a constant balance. You have to keep adding paint, removing paint, seeing what you get. And I think this is better. Okay. Now we'll get the eye. Let me bring this in close and we'll see what I can do here. So this is darker. And this is darker. And this is darker. And let me darken all of this too. Okay, just a bit. And you do see some of the lashes, so that's quite important. Look how it takes a nice shape here. I really, really like it. Like this. And of course, I'm putting my own interpretation on it. Um, it's definitely not perfectly accurate, yes, but uh, it's an interpretation that works for me. This crease is very visible. So here we go. And if you want to just get rid of some of it to keep it a little more muted, go like this, kind of blend it in together. You see, so I got a nice little, and the camera really messes this up, but um, it makes the, these darker lines stronger where they are, they are actually a little weaker. Maybe you can see it here, the balance a little better. I don't know, uh, but in any case, yeah. 
Yeah, this looks nice. Uh, one thing that bugs me a bit is on the left eye, actually. This should go a little lower. Like that. Okay, yeah, that's better. Um, this should go all around the eye, and I kind of stopped. This is a little darker here. We have a few visible uh, creases around this section here. But look at what I can do here. This is nice. So I'm going to pre-wet. This It's just to show you the technique, but it's not, it's not a must. What I can do is pre-wet this and then come with this line here and start sharp and then it will go blended. You see, because I wet it. That's another kind of way of approaching this. And bring in some more paint if it's too weak. And yeah, that looks good. I like that. Um, and to be honest with you, I think we're almost done. Like I don't see too much I'd like to change. Let's see if we can soften this edge here with my new fancy brush. So I'm gonna wet it. It actually works. That is so cool. Huh. It really works well for lifting. Wow, that's really nice. I can also blend this here. So let's do that. It's very important because this part of the mouth here, the corners, they're gonna be sharper at the bottom and rounder up top. So I wanna make this top part rounder. So let's see if I can get it. See? That's really, really nice. That's a nice little nuance there. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, now there is a bit of reflected light under the lip. The way I'm gonna get it is by darkening the lower lip. So let me do that. Now it's just small corrections time, okay? Just gonna correct a few things that stick out to me. It's not a must. Um, but let's see here. So this goes a little darker while maintaining all of these creases on the lips, of course. There are a few very major ones that you want to get in. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the paint I have here and help it move a little higher here just to darken it up a bit. Grab any excess water that I don't need because I don't want to get a back run. Yeah, that's nice. That works. I can actually use that uh, brush again. So let me show you. Like this cast shadow right here by the nose. It starts and then goes smoother. It starts a little sharper and goes a little smoother. Let's see if we can get that too. Yeah, it's really addictive. It really allows me to play around with the edges. That's really fun. Um, so yeah, let me give you a... Let's do one more thing and then I'll give you a better view from the front camera because I think we're close to wrapping this one up. Let me do this. The eyebrow just kind of puts something in there for it like that. There we go. Okay, let me show you uh, with a face camera here. It's a bit hard to see on the table. I mean, I like it. The shape here is a bit inaccurate. Let's get rid of that. Let's try it out. We'll see. Let's see here. This, I want to... It makes the cheekbones a little too strong. And it's just not accurate. So let's get rid of some of this paint here. We'll try with the normal brush. And if we can't lift it, we'll, we'll go for the thinner brush. We'll see. Okay, a little bit better. Um, there is a bit of a shadow. I'm all over the place, you'll forgive me, but there is a bit of this here. And there is a bit of this here, barely visible. There we go. Um, yeah, so let's continue with this shadow on the left. And then I'll think I'll bring things to to wrap up. Let's get rid of this. I don't like this. It came way too much, way too close here to the center. Now the problem is I'm starting to lift the layer underneath, okay? The wet and wet layer. So we want to be careful there. Oh, but I think this is a little better. And I actually really like it. There are a lot of inaccuracies. Yes, of course. Um, but I think it's, it's, it's somewhere there. This is in the shadow. 
Uh, but I think we did a decent job here. Uh, what do I want to strengthen? This, this should all be darker, but I don't want to do that because I decided to interpret this as in a very fluid kind of loose wash. But understand that this technically is darker, as dark as the eyes, but I don't want to go there. I never wanted to go there with this one. One more thing that kind of bugged me is the shadow here. This is all in the shadow, like this. It's all one big shadow, okay? Uh, but yeah, I think this is good. So let me address some, oh, okay, yeah, I know what I want to do. A bit of a risky move, but we'll do it. Um, I want to add that shadow here. I think it's important. I'm pre-wetting, then I'm putting, I'm dabbing a bit of paint in there. Let's see how this works. And this goes around like this. And this kind of blends over at the top. Let's see what we get here. Yeah, that's good. This we'll get rid of. Lower line, we gotta blend that. Yeah, hopefully that adds a bit of a nuance here to the keystone. Uh, but in any case, let's see what you're writing. Probably a lot of messages I need to get to, and then we'll uh, go move forward to, towards wrapping it up. Um, Dave, Liron, how do you fix patches? Uh, we talked about that. John says, thanks, Liron, so heavy. They're useful, very useful. Um, well balance of cool and warm, says Deep Krishan uh, Kukreti. Thank you so much for saying that. Let me move this a bit to the side here, just so that I can look at your messages. Um, G Satish says, BTS Army. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, BTS, yeah, of course. BTS is that Korean uh, band, is it? I don't know anything, sorry about that. Hmm. Okay, turns out I have an event at six, which is 30 more minutes. Uh, Zeta Kur, hi there, Ron. I guess last time I think I could have cleared, wait a second, the chat jumped, sorry. My question, what do you uh, feel about painting as t-shirt prints? Anyone that you know that does that? Um, not personally, but I mean, uh, it works for people, so why not? Um, if, if it's something that people want to buy, um, I definitely think it's a great idea. Uh, and, and it looks cool. Water, like traditional watercolor on t-shirts, that's fine. Oh, I actually know one person who does it uh, for themselves, and it's really good. And his style is, it lends itself perfectly to that. Um, let me share a link. Uh, Instagram because you want to see his art style. His name is Roy and maybe he's watching right now. Roy Pallant. I'm going to share his Instagram with you. Um, not the personal one, the art one. Uh, so he's doing a lot of colored pencils uh, which are beautiful works. Now there are a couple of fashion design things there, but if you scroll a bit, let me just link to something nice. I'm gonna link directly to one of his posts that I like. So this is his Instagram. I think you should be able to see it. Uh, Nicki Minaj, he's a big fan of Nicki. <laughs> so yeah, uh, he does uh, designs on shirts, like actual uh, paintings. It looks really good actually. I believe he did a few. Um, Kawamizu. Yes, I do speak Hebrew. Of course. Um, Brian Norfleet. Do you have teaching online? So you can go to my YouTube channel. I have tons of videos. Hopefully that's what you meant. Tons of videos that teach. Do you have a teaching online course? Yes, I do. I do have a few. You can find the links in the channel. Um, also, I believe in the description of this video. Uh, Hanan Muhammad. Wow, it's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Javi Dev, it seems like three or four washes will complete a piece. Do you ever run into a piece that you add more uh, or even less? Less definitely, more definitely. Yes, Javi Dev. Greetings from Chicago. Thank you. Uh, it is very common, yes. It is very common to do more or less. It, it really will change based on the painting. Um, don't, don't stick to those rules. Maybe you want to work in teeny tiny thin glazes or maybe, you know, there are plenty of ways of doing this, so, um, yeah. Sporthy. Uh, um, I always wanted to learn sketching. Can you do a video? Yes, I have a few videos on sketching, but I will do more. Uh, Pragya Majumdar. Yes, it's lovely, even the patchy area. Thank you. 
Ji Satish says sends hearts and BTS and Kim Namjoon and Kim Seik Jin and Min Yoongi. I guess that's the names of BTS. Uh, do you know uh, Stefan Silver? Mm, no, I don't. Who's Stefan Silver? Let me check. I learn new things. Oh, okay. Steven. It's not Stefan. Is it pronounced Steven? I don't know. Uh, but an artist. I'll, I'll look into his work. Looks cool. Oh, of course. So he did the... Uh, what's her name? Uh, I recognize the character. Kim Possible. Yeah, yeah, of course. Funny. Oh, cool. I, I wasn't familiar with the artist, but I know Kim Possible. Uh, that's funny. I'll look into his work. It looks cool. Um, Henan says, I'm, in, I'm Indian. Marjorie Johnson. Often my new sh uh, shadows dry darker or lighter than I hoped. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. So when it dries, it looks lighter. You have to... You have to get used to it. There isn't really a way of mitigating that. What you have to do is always um, imagine the value you want. So, for example, you see here, this is going to be super watery once it's dry. So, yes, it may look a little strong, but you actually probably, if you want it to look stronger once dry, you need to push it a little more, like 10% or maybe 20% darker, and then it'll dry the way you want it to look. Okay? So, what I would do is not worry too much like you can put a small wash um, on the painting and see if it looks light or dark enough if it looks just right you need to darken it a bit more okay so darken it a bit more and and then continue and you you will uh, benefit from referring to that um, real-time value control tutorial i did where i really show you how to control the values to lighten them and darken them lighten them and darken them that way you're not so worried to put a mark and see what it looks like and improve it if you need to now here's what i'm going to do real quick before i get to more questions i'm going to take a picture uh because i think the computer screen doesn't do this one justice so here we go and i'm going to put it up on the screen as i answer to more questions uh, answer more questions uh so i just think it looks so much better uh on my phone and pretty much anywhere else um so let me bring it over to my computer um Let's see here. I want it to be on screen as I talk. Okie doke. Um, and then uh, exposure, because it's just very dark for some reason. Because um, I don't have good light here right now. Not as good as it can be. That's way too much. I don't know why my computer is super slow at the moment. Whatever, this will work. Okay. So let me uh, bring that pic in. Let's make it a little smaller. Sorry for the dead air. I'm just editing the photo. I mean, cropping it right now and making it smaller. I don't want it to take up the entire screen. Uh, the colors are really off in the photo. How do I fix that? Adjustments, hue, saturation. Can't believe I'm doing this right now, but whatever. So for the highlights, uh, oh sorry, image color balance uh, adjustment, color balance. So it'll give me a moment as I just talk nonsense because I want to show you the accurate, authentic colors, so to speak. Um, so I'm just cleaning it to look more like what I'm seeing in front of me. Here we go. And yeah, this is good. Finally, I got it. I got it, you can count on me. Like one, two, three. Uh, just a second. So it will never look the same on screen and my camera for some reason heavily, heavily edits the, the photos, my webcam that is. Just makes them, I don't know, look weird. So I'm gonna edit now, image, you really want to tune in because I'm going to also remove the tape in just a few moments. Um, so here we go. I paint another portrait for you. That's the name of my folder. And here we go. Okie doke. Now to the uh, process of making it smaller because it always imports them in the original resolution. And I think this is a much better representation of what it looks like in real life. So hopefully you'll enjoy um, come on, enjoy seeing that, so, there we go, we got it, 
Okay, yeah. So I'm just going to make it disappear for a moment. See this? And this. Sorry, this. Okay, so this is much more like what it actually looks like. So hopefully you'll enjoy seeing that. And now let's uh, see what you're saying here. Um, do you know BTS? Yes, I do. Darmin, do you enjoy gouache? Never tried gouache, but I should. Now, how do you mix grays? Do you use complements to make grays? Yes, I actually use uh, complementary colors to mix uh, gray and black and all of the other colors that are muted. I use all of my primary colors for that. Um, let's see. Um, Kawamizu asks, uh, did I go to some kind of an art school? The answer is no, <laughs> I haven't. I learned everything by myself. If you care about trying out a lot of things, and let me make myself bigger here. Why am I all shy in the corner? So if you want to um, uh, taste a lot of different types of art, uh, if you want to network with a lot of people and all of that, uh, get involved in the industry, go to art school, maybe it will help, or don't, <laughs> you can do whatever you want. But if you know what you want to use, for me it was watercolor, and you know that you're gonna build a business around your art, to be honest with you, I think art school is a hindrance. It is something that will set you back, especially when it comes to simply time. And it's very time consuming, and I don't know if it's worth it for many people. Uh, to be honest. Uh, it is good maybe for networking, it is good to taste a lot of different types of art and to experiment, that's great, but you don't have to do it. Don't let the teachers there tell you that what you're making is bad, unless it's subjectively bad, which can happen. I mean, just, you know, learning the fundamentals, composition, and value, and all of that, yeah. But if, if they're saying, oh, you know, a lot of people say that anime is not art, yeah, come on, it is. Um, so I hope that helps Kawamizu. Leo Ken, 1990, highly run, big fan from India. How to assess and most importantly maintain the moisture of the large brush area and paper, waiting for your valuable tips. So how to assess and most importantly maintain the moisture of the large wash area. Okay, yeah. So f you get a feel for it. It's A lot of it is just intuitive. Uh, what you can do for starters is look at it in the light, you know, tilt the paper, hopefully you can see me tilting it, uh, and look at it in the light and see how bright it is, how much how, how much it glows the sheen. If it's very glowy as you've seen it, it means it's still wet. But once it reaches like, once it dries, let's say 25 to 30 percent out of the hundred, you should be very careful. Now you can use uh, the sprayer, which for some reason isn't in front of me, I probably dropped it again. I keep dropping stuff, but I'll find it, it's here somewhere. Uh, use a sprayer, just go like this, it will keep it wet for a little longer. Um, and it's kind of like a one-way street. It goes, uh, it goes drier and drier and drier and drier. And as it dries, you can add, you get gradual transitions, and then you you can't get any gradual transitions anymore. So you have to, uh, so you do the sharp transitions and sharper and sharper until you can barely get anything to blend, and then you have to stop. Now, how to maintain it? Once it's wet, you can't really do too much. I mean, it will just dry on its own. I wouldn't recommend bringing more water into it. It, it just doesn't work for the most part. Um, but here's what you want to make sure you do. Start with the paper fully wet, not damp, fully wet. And the way to do this is to cover it even twice with water. And you saw me do that. Do a one, one wash over it. And then while it's still wet, do one more. Because by the time you get to the bottom, right around here, the top will be dry already or start to dry. So do it twice, especially for thicker papers and cold pressed papers, I find. Let me smoothen uh, this because this is actually a cast shadow from the hair that is quite, um, quite blended. And because I have this brush now, I'm going to be addicted to <laughs> blending each and every edge I can. So here we go. That looks nicer. You can't see what I'm doing, my bad. <laughs> you couldn't see a thing. I blended this section here, okay? Um, and then I can also go ahead and blend some of this maybe, just a bit. Looks good. And there we go. So yeah, this looks nice. But in any case, just ignore that and pretend this is the painting. <laughs> because it is, it is a better picture of it. Um, I think, I don't know, hopefully. 
Um, let's see here. Yeah, maintaining uniform moisture for one large wash. Start as wet as you can. That's the main way. Because if you start once, this part is already starting to... Let me move this. You cover it all up. This part starts to dry by the time you get to this part, just wetting it. So what you want to do is go over it again. And then you'll have an equal amount of wetness. Okay? Uh, I hope that helps. Start as wet as it, it's possible. Marjorie, although I used watercolor 60 years ago, I wanted I went to oils and many gla uh, glazes. Part of my problem with drying shifts, perhaps before I go, uh, I really want my watercolors to sink. Um, yeah, I get it. I get it. A lot of the beauty in watercolor is getting that right the first time. Um, and it's just practice. I don't get it right most of the time, the first time. Um, so I would encourage you to really do a lot of monochromatic studies. What you want to do is isolate a problem, Marjorie. So just do black and white studies. Practice getting that value right. And when you do black and white, you isolate the problem. You only have to tackle the values. Trace, like I did with this one, just trace something you want to paint if you don't feel like drawing it or you can't or whatever. And then just do a black and white study of it and another one and another one and another one. It will get easier to predict how much lighter a paint is going to dry. Okay, uh, so this is my tip for you. Cubs Win, what brand is the blending brush used? Um, so it's a Royal and Langnickel. Um, I can show you here and I'll write it down too. You probably cannot see this. Yeah, it's barely visible. I'm going to write it down. Uh, blending brush, bl uh, blending and lifting brush, so you can refer to it later on. And thank you once again for these, John. Royal and Lang Nickel. Lang Nickel. Hopefully, uh, that will be helpful. And this is Zen. And it says six on the size. I have a bunch of others. Um, okay. Dave. Uh, hey, oops. Okay. My chat keeps jumping. Sorry. Uh, uh, um. Wow. Okay. A lot of messages I need to get to. Yeah. Hey, John. Feel free to send me some brushes and goodies too. I don't mind. Uh, Okay, let's skip a bit. Looks amazing. They're on stunning portrait my friend. Another job well done. It's greatly uh, appreciated. Thank you so much, Dave. Um, Almiron says, super painting. Thank you, Marjorie. Although I'm not a portrait painter, I haven't learned much today. I have learned much today. Having a battery of brushes at the ready use of tissues, I tend to like stunning colors only uh, because I'm not letting work dry enough. Yeah, I, I actually love strong colors. So, you know, go for it. I, it brings out the best in me when I just go crazy with the colors sometimes. Um, Soul Shadow on the left cheek is a uh, master stroke. Thank you. Uh, true use of the wet and wet wash. Yeah, I should have gone probably a little stronger there too. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm from Syria, but I like drawing. Um, and I can see a username. I just see this quotation mark, I think. Um, but being from Syria doesn't mean you don't like drawing. So <laughs> you don't have to justify it. That's cool. Welcome aboard. Uh, Joel Visco. I want to learn, or Jewel. Joel. Jewel Visco, I want to learn this medium, but I'm afraid to do so. Well, you never know if you don't try, so just try it out. Uh, John, another great live demo. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, John. Thank you for being here. Uh, Christine says, looks great. Thanks, Iran. Thank you. Uh, Ian Jackson, a little bit of eye color in the top right and bottom right corners of the painting with uh, would tie the eye into the painting. Oh, okay, so to get a bit of blue on the other sides. Yeah, that could, that could actually work. Plus, I got the left eye a little crooked, but that's fine. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, Tazine says it looks beautiful. The warm and cool coordinate so well. Thank you so much. Laura Merif uh, Merrifield, love this portrait. Thanks, Liron. Jade, ah, I did for me some t-shirts with uh, Soundgarden and Chris Cornell. Watercolors I made. Oh, cool. Who's Chris Cornell? Is, I mean, the name rings a bell. I'll check. Um... Oh, okay, okay, so you painted Chris Cornell, that's cool. <laughs> I, 
I'm so bad with music. Um, with names of, of movie stars and stuff like that. I'm so bad with that. Uh, Vespa, I want that new fancy brush with the very short bristles for blending. What is it? Okay, I wrote it down. Alessandro, the upper shadow of the right nostril should be softer. Upper shadow of the right nostril. Yeah, definitely. I'll Look, I'll just fix it. It annoys me too. Let's get rid of this. It's annoying. There we go. Smooth this out. Oh, you can't see a thing again. Let me make this disappear. <laughs> make this smooth. Make this a little smoother here. Yeah, it's really annoying. I mean, I should have taken care of it way earlier. Yeah, that's better. Um, I could lift back some highlights here. So here's a fun, a fun thing to do. Let's lift back at the highlight there. Uh, on the nostril, so somewhere around here. There we go. You see how it gives it just a bit more. I kind of went lazy on the nose, I will admit. At some point I was like, ah, it's fine. Ah, it's fine the way it is. There we go. So this looks a little bit better, I think. Um, could probably soften this too. There we go. This too. I can just go on and start softening things left and right. Which is really fun. Uh, but yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good now. Let's move a bit more of this paint into the shadow here. See? Uh, but the shadow needs to be soft, so let's not overdo it. Let's bring in a bit of water here to this left edge and lift. That's it. Yeah, I think I'm happy with it. Um, I think I'm happy with it. Let's see here. Before we wrap it up, I'm going to read the last couple of chats. Uh, Jade, such a funny girl, can't help it. Yeah, I get it. Shelly Pryor, I mean, I, I guess you're talking about um, this dude, uh, Chris Cornell. Yeah. Uh, Shelly Pryor, fine art. You chose this image because of the strong contrast. Do you get requests for commissions with flat lighting and do you attempt them or simply say no? Great question, uh, Shelly. Great, great question. I get them. And very often I'll decline because I know I won't enjoy it as much. Um, and some photos are just, they just water, they make watercolor sing. And if I know that it's not like the, the, it's not the thing that will make watercolor sing, even though it's possible sometimes, I just usually I'll, I'll decline. I declined a few works like this. I just said, I, I know it's not going to be ideal. I prefer not to. Uh, so yeah, great question. Uh, Oliver's great job, buddy. Uh, Jade, uh, I want to do a T-shirt with the Alice Cooper watercolor I made. Yeah, sure, send them over. I, I mean, I don't, I didn't see any of them. I'm curious to see them now. Richard Olia says hi. Uh, the quotation mark. The person from Syria says bye. Uh, I hope you subscribe. Oh, I see you're still here. Good. Uh, if you can subscribe, anyone who's it's the first time watching, I really appreciate it, uh, and feel free to come visit again. Uh, Vespa, absolutely beautiful, Iran. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Kawamizu, as a yofi, I'm going to start with acryl. So Kawamizu says she's starting, or he's starting. Oh, she's starting. Yeah, I'm going to start. She's starting to use acrylic paints. Cool. Uh, let's see. I'm going to skip a bit. Uh, Leo Ken, hi, Iran. Big fan from India. How to assess and what's for? Yeah, we talked about that. Hello, I'm Vietnamese, says Tian Ho. That's cool. Alessandro, before I meant I love the painting, not only the drawing, the results is very, very good. See you soon, Liron. Thank you so much. Uh, Dave, wow, does look much better. Thanks, Liron. Thank you for being here. Aniruda says, yes, the photo is so much uh, better. Yeah, indeed. Okay, we got to the place where I shared the photo in the chat. Uh, as many have mentioned, the transition on the left cheek is fantastic, very beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, da -da -da -da. Mm. <laughs> the chat keeps jumping. Okay, yeah. Good. Uh, hearts, thank you so much for that. Um, and thank you for the flowers, roses, thank you. And NCG, another great live. Thanks, Iran. Marjorie Johnson, I've been to several colleges, art and minor. I've learned more here about watercolor, every aspect, than I have learned in any class. That's why I went to teaching adult classes, and even better. I went, uh, I went to teaching. Yeah, definitely, because it's more specialized. It's not necessarily even the art school's fault. This is just very specific. Uh, Vojta Heliron, I wanted to ask in the last live stream, but the chat jumped. Do you have a dream art studio that you would one day want to own and work in? I mean, it as a space building. Uh, not, not really. I like, I like it. It's cozy here. Um, you could, I could always improve a lot of things, especially visuals and what it looks like in videos. But overall, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> so yeah, it's very functional. Uh, that's what I'm after. Uh, Felicia, 
thinks for this portraits intimidate me so much the getting proportions right part i guess i need more practice yeah i i traced so i did really work hard for the proportions here but yeah for the painting stage of course uh, oliver is beautifully done my friend i'm jealous of the hair that's my current problem area so take the advice to heart and really just show the overall uh, pattern don't just try and paint each and every hair and you see it all blended together at the end i don't have a bunch of uh brush marks that's the key my friend so if that helps Shelly you can adjust your camera setting in OBS uh, then maybe your video camera will be closer to the your phone image yeah I could do that I can I actually have a dashboard to fix it specifically I will do that maybe I'll play around with it in the future uh, T to Terry uh, I want to see you work not <laughs> done pics please uh, so yeah go back I painted it if you go back uh, I think you missed the start uh, you'll see the entire process Manat Gandhi says, wow, thank you so much. Oliferous, I have a Lunar Blender brush from Princeton's Select Line. They're really cheap, but well-made synthetics. Interesting. You may check it out. Oh, yeah, remove the tape. Time to remove the tape. P. Etten, thank you for the reminder. Thank you, everyone, for the kind words. Who's Chris Cornell? <laughs> uh, okay, Jay, da, 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 love Chris. a lot of people love Chris Cornell. Uh, I'm sorry, Leroy, I'm pretty talkative, but where can I send the Alice Cooper one? Send me to the same email address you sent me the last time. Leroy at Leroyan.com. Jeff, 120 people watching and only 50 likes. Come on. Oh, now I see it's 137 likes. So thank you so much for that. Okay, let's get to uh, removing the tape. Mark says thanks for fixing the nose finger. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I don't want any nose fingers uh, in my paintings. So here it is. Let's remove the... It actually looks good in the camera now. Now it looks a little better. I don't know what changed or if anything changed, but yeah. So are you ready? Are you ready for this? So we'll get rid of this side. And then we'll get rid of this side. It already looks quite nice. I actually should have dried it with a hair dryer before removing the tape. It would have, would have, would have flattened it out, but that's fine. This side and the last but not least, uh, this one. So what do you say? Hopefully you like it. Hopefully you enjoyed the process. Uh, I have three minutes and then I have to jump on uh, an event, a Zoom call, if you will. Uh, but I do want to thank you so, so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, it is really thanks to you uh, that I can do what I do. Let me do this. It looks better. Here. Um, it's really thanks to you watching and commenting and helping me promote the videos and getting the courses and just any, any, anything like right? and I want to thank you for all the kind comments and kind messages I get quite a lot and it's very hard to keep up uh, it's going to be one of my challenges moving forward to try to always engage with you and talk and you know be in contact um, while this is all growing um, and hopefully I, I never um, I guess lose touch of that I have to, I have to make one last improvement sorry um, this should be softer there we go <laughs> I'm obsessed now uh, but yeah uh, hopefully uh, I can maintain that it's one of the things that that are always going to be important to me because it's one of those things once you grow you forget what you were doing to grow and I never want to forget that and that is all about you doing the videos you want to watch helping you with the issues that you're having uh, and I hope to always be able to do that thank you so so much I will wrap it up now uh, take care, stay safe. Uh, it's a bit tricky right now uh, in, in multiple places. So just do whatever you can to stay safe. I really, really, really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. I will talk to you again in another video, in another live real soon. Be sure to check out the critiques video uh, and I will talk to you then. Take care.